Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Exotic Astrology. And uh, today is a very special day. We have a very special guest. Uh, Advaita Simha is here with us. He stays uh, in Germany and I recently met him uh, some time back and we had an amazing discussion on Pranayam, right? So today he is going to enlighten us about Pranayam. What is Pranayam? How can it help us to make a better uh, human being? How can it help us in our material journey, in our mental uh, health journey, in our spiritual life? And uh, also he has a very, very, very wonderful and amazing YouTube channel. It's uh, the name of the channel is Atma Flow. So there's a lot of content on pranayam, healing and meditation and all this. So if you have not watched it, uh, then please go and watch it. I will pin the channel down in the description. So, and uh, yes, he also has his website and uh, welcome, sir. And it's very great to have you and please enlighten us uh, about pranayam. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Namaste. 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 I'm thankful that you have me here today. And yeah, that we met recently and we could discuss about astrology and pranayama. It's very important topics, um, especially pranayama. I practice myself over the last seven years, um, followed the Vedic principles over 10 years already. And I discovered that we putting so much emphasis on diet, being vegetarian, being vegan, fasting from sugar, going into ketosis, intermittent fasting or whatsoever. But then I ask my question, how long can we survive without food? Maybe for 30 days, maybe for 40 days even, without water for three days, but without oxygen, maybe a minute. So, but we don't put the importance on breathing. So, so much diet, so much fasting, but the most important is actually the breathing. And prana, yama, prana, yama, the meaning is prana, the life force, the life energy, and ayama do hold back or do extend. So with pranayama, we learn actually to extend our lifespan so we can practically live longer. And studies shown that animals um, who breathe um, not so fast, they live longer. Like the animals who breathe slow, they live longer, and animals who breathe faster, they die earlier. Okay, interesting. And we breathe approximately 21,000 times in a day. Uh, a normal person breathes maybe 12 times in a minute. A stressed person, 16 times. So, but if you want to be peaceful and have a clear mind and be focused and grounded and healthy, then we should breathe around six times in a minute. Wow. But with our normal lifestyle nowadays and society and stressful and uh, our sympathetic nervous system is very active, the fight, the flight and the freeze response. And most of the time we forgot actually how to breathe. Like I became a father recently. My daughter is nine months old and yes. I check every day if she still breathes into the belly. And babies naturally okay. debrief into the belly. Okay. And this makes one healthy because then you can access the prana to breathe into the belly, up to the diaphragm, into the top parts of your lungs. So that's real breathing. And nowadays, our breathing um, happens only in the chest. And so we, when we breathe, like for example, you come in a stressful moment, or you're in fear, or you're in anger, or you you just freaked out or something happens in your life, then immediately you start start breathing with the mouth okay. and breathing into the chest. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, breath. And this actually creates blockages, so the energy can't flow anymore. It blocks the nadis, the energy channels, so the energy, the prana, can't flow properly. And then you get sick, you get all kinds of uh, mental issues like depression, um, the energy can't flow, so the yeah the how you say the energy stuck in certain parts of the body, and then you get also sick. You can get cancer. You can get can get all kinds of diseases, and all the diseases we face nowadays in our society, um, the origin is from wrong breathing. 
So all starts with the right breeding method. Interesting. As they say, even in the scriptures, right, that the number of breaths that we are destined to take, that is like fixed, you know. So, yeah, I mean, at the time of death, it's like we can't breathe anymore. That's how you know that the person is like, you know, uh, on the final verge uh, of his or her life. And just for the audience, uh, my camera is going on and off for reasons I cannot understand. And Mercury is retrograde. So <laughs> everything is fine from my side, but uh, I am switching on, on the, my video is on, but it's going on and off. So uh, please bear with it. And yes, sir, please continue. I like you said, as soon as the soul leaves the body, yeah, that means there's no air inside anymore. Okay. And it's actually, actually described that um, the, the soul, the breath, the breath, is like a bird, like a bird is bound by ropes on a tree and can't fly away. And in the same way, the soul actually wants to go, wants to leave this body and go in higher realms. Okay. But it can't go because it's bound to the body, to the breath. Ah, okay. So, okay, I see. So the breath is the binding force to, to our existence. So without, as soon as we stop breathing, we immediately relieve this planet because we, oh, we can't. Okay. The body can't survive without breathing. And even though in the scriptures in the Mahabharata and the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can say from we can see from some um, sadhus um, who took a breath um, here and there, maybe once in a month, or like Dhruva Maharaj, he took a breath every 12th day. One Correct. Breath. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And at one point he saw Lord Vishnu in his heart and he got darshan of the Lord. Correct. And very Beautiful descriptions of all this, the Sadhus Vishamrita and other other saints from the Mahabharat who were King Yayati, even who underwent very many austerities. And he took also every here and there, he took a breath and he just, um, yeah, he didn't eat, he didn't drink, he just took breathing, he just took prana. Because everything we eat, an apple, for example, is nothing else than prana, everything is life energy. Yeah. And our whole being is yeah controlled by prana. So when we breathe in, there's this five mahapranas, mahavayus, maha maha five air in our bodies. There's also upavayus, like some yeah, some side um, vayus, some side airs. But the most important are the five mahavayus. Um starts with prana vayu. When you breathe in, then the prana goes from the from the um, bottom of your spine all the way up to your throat when you inhale and this is also the urge to survive it comes okay. from this prana and this is yeah this is the the force within all the life comes from this from this value and then the next value would be the apana value the when you breathe out then the prana goes down um, this is the evacuating process or if you urinate or even if you have menstruation or childbirth even um, falls under this category. Okay. Uh, this is also one very important vayu. And samana vayu, samana vayu is the vayu controls the digestive area so that we can digest food, emotions, whatsoever. Um, then we have the uh, udhyana vayu, what is for communication that we can speak, or also is for sleeping. Yeah, and then the vyana vayu is the air what controls the whole body, that we can move, that we can um, activate the muscles, the joints, that we are, that we can just move freely as we want. Otherwise, we, we would, it would be like a stone. There's no prana inside. So this is very important that we use, learn to, how to use pranayama to control these airs inside. Because you can't control, for example, your digestion just by thinking about it. Yeah. Or you can't control the nervous system or your endocrine system just by thinking about it. Maybe you can if you're very advanced in the yoga okay. practice. It's of course possible. Oh, it's possible. But otherwise, you, you need to you need to make use of the pranayama to control the breathing, to control the prana. So you can have so many benefits. It's it's unlimited benefits, starting from having good digestion, having a better sleep quality, um, to balance the the and harmonize the, the body, the mind, to um, yeah, to 
improve your nervous system, your endocrine system. To go deep within, to have control over your life, to have control over physical health. Pranayama even can um, heal you in certain areas. Just by breathing, you can relieve stress, anxiety. You'll be more calm. You'll be more happy. You'll feel more energized. You can have a positive effect on other people when you practice pranayama. This is unlimited benefits just from some simple breathing techniques. Okay, I see. And uh, generally, like, uh, so when we do the pranayam, one question I had is like, these five airs we know, right? Prana, pan, vayan, samanudhyan. So these five vayus are like all, always like the imbalances are reduced and they like balance out each other or how does it work? Or one goes more uh, or the other goes less or what does actually happen with the five vayus when we do pranayam? Yeah, it depends which kind of pranayama you do. For yeah. example, for samana vayu, it's important to do um, pranayama with, 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 with focuses on the area of the belly, like Kapalbhati or Bastrika, where you use your, or you apply Udhyana Bandha, like this, this energy locks. Um, Apana vayu would be, for example, um, you can influence by um, applying Mula Bandha, where you squeeze your perineum muscle, or by doing a headstand also, or by by holding the breath, you can control prana vayu. So there's different methods how you can control these vayus. And it's all about to sublimate, sublimate, sublimate these vayus to transform it into ochas, into more subtle energy, actually. Okay. And that's important that we practice asana and pranayama. And it's not so important always we think about pranayama, all these kind of different techniques. And, and it's sometimes there are too much theoretical and philosophy and practice and uh, for myself I practice pranayama since seven years and for the last five years I practice it wrong because yeah. I thought pranayama is all about feeling good feeling the energy like I, I became like kind of a prana chunky like an addict oh, okay. of prana <laughs> and but I did the practice and then I started my day and I was completely passionate and I was not really calm maybe in the moment when I practice but after during the day my mind was still wandering around, want to enjoy jumps from one block to the next, like a monkey jumping around from one tree to the next. Excellent. So after the last one, two years, I discovered with my pranayama teacher that real pranayama is actually where you sit and you don't breathe anymore. This is real pranayama. Okay. This other techniques is just breathing to help you to come to a state of being completely connected with your inner source to transcend actually the material desires like Panchanchali explains in the yoga sutras starting with the, the eightfold the ashtanga yoga process starting yeah. with yama niyama like the do's and don'ts like ahimsa non-violence don't steal um, perform the do's for example perform tapasya study the scriptures Follow Brahmacharya, um, worship, worship of deities. Um, he establishes this in the beginning, and then you can go further to asanas to practice yoga asanas, um, and then the stage of pranayama, of course, the fourth, the fourth anga, the fourth limb. And then we have pratyahara. So the goal of pranayama is actually pratyahara to, to withdraw the senses of the objects. So the, the mind and the senses are completely withdrawn of the objects of the senses. Okay. So you're yeah. in control, actually. Please? Yeah, yeah. It's like, finally, you withdraw it to your inside, right? Inside, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then further, you go then dharana, uh, concentration, that you meditate, but you focus on something. Still, you, you think about one object, for example, and, and I have a lamp here, and I focus in my meditation on this one lamp and nothing else. I really emerge in this one thought. This would be dharana, concentration. But then we have dhyan, meditation, means that I also meditate, but I let go of all kind of, 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 of like uh, active focus to just be still in the mind and to just be in meditation. And then after only can come samadhi. And samadhi would be the eighth limb, the eighth anger 
of, of Patanjali Yoga Sutra. And I always thought Samadhi would be the goal of, 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 of this yoga process. But recently I discovered that actually the goal of, of the Yoga Sutras is not Samadhi, because you can think about um, it's eight limbs. So this means there's like eight letters. Yes. I say letter, they climb on. Yeah, the first would yeah. be Yama, first floor, Niyama, second floor, and so on. So you come to seventh floor, Tiana, meditation. Then you take the last letter and you go up Samadhi. Yeah. But then some, what, what is coming after the, the eight limb, you know, you understand? Oh, okay. So the eight, uh, the, the goal is actually Kavalya, to really let go of the material world, to transcend, okay. to liberation, Mukti, that would be the goal actually of, of yoga. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, so, and so, so about, it's not just Samadhi, it's more than that actually. It's more than that, yeah. Okay, I see. Okay. But if you achieve Samadhi, you also achieve the next step, what is Kavalya. Okay, I it's, see. It's, it's related, it's connected. And Pranayama, it will bring us to this point. It's, it's so, so to say the center of all these practices is Pranayama. Because by training the, the breathing means also to train the, the mind. By control the breath means to control the mind. So with yeah. simple techniques, we can just focus on the breathing because the mind doesn't know. The mind always thinks and, and, and wants and rejects. But if you consciously focus your mind on your breath, you can actually get control over the mind because the mind doesn't know. It, it's something new. Like it's, it's like, hey, what's going on here? Because you never took care of your breathing your whole life. And all of a sudden, automatically you breathe, but all of a sudden you control the breathing and then the mind kind of freaks out. But that's the way actually to control the mind. And okay. so it's very, it's very easy actually to just, yeah, just take a one breath is enough to completely calm the mind by practice. You can, for me, for example, every day I take three times a day, I sit down and I take three conscious breaths. And the whole atmosphere changes. Like I'm cooking in the kitchen for 40 people and I'm, I'm kind of stressed out almost. And, and we have like 10 minutes before we have to um, have to have to have to, have to the, the food ready for the, for the people. And then I just remember, okay, let's take a deep breath, belly, diaphragm, chest, and let's go. And immediately the whole atmosphere changed. I'm not stressed anymore. My mind is clear and focused. So I can every day practice with the small steps, the importance of breathing. Okay. And this is not even pranayama, because real pranayama, like I said before, is kumbak, means to, to, to hold back the breathing. That is yes. actually real pranayama. Correct, correct, correct. So when you said like you breathe and, you know, from the stomach and the diaphragm and the so how, how how much do you do that? Do you do that only one time or like 10 times or how many times do you do, do this? Yeah, usually in my in my in my yoga yoga classes, um when beginner class I always give one and a half hours and the other classes approximately 60 minutes. Um and we first we learn how to breathe properly. So we for five minutes we learn to activate all the breathing muscles, starting with the abdomen, with the belly. So we just place our hands on the belly and we deeply breathe into the belly. Mm -hmm. Four seconds in, six seconds out. Important is not the number. You can also find your own rhythm, but it's more important that you breathe out longer than you inhale. So it comes down the nervous system. So the next muscle would be the diaphragm. So you just um, hold on the side of your rib cage, you inhale, and you feel gently how the rib cage expands. So you can also get um, a feeling of the diaphragm muscle. And then you hold, uh, interlay your fingers, you hold on your uh, back, back of your neck and your elbows looking facing upward to the ceiling. And then you try to consciously breathe into the, into the top parts of the lungs. Okay. So that would be the longer version, or you just place one hand on the belly one hand on the chest 
Um, if you like, we can do a short reading session for two minutes and you can experience for yourself. Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. So I want you to close your eyes and also the viewers and the video can also join. It's a very nice, easy experience. And it's not even pranayama, it's just normal breathing. Without that, we can't even do pranayama. <laughs> Yes, yes. Please, do, uh, my humble request to whoever is watching, please participate in this just for two minutes. Thank you. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. Yeah. Find yourself in a comfortable sitting position. Your spine straight, your shoulders, your arms, your hands relaxed, your face muscles relaxed, maybe a small gentle smile on your lips. And then you place one hand on the chest, on the heart center, and the other hand um, at the belly button on the belly. And then you take a deep breath into the belly, all the way up to the top parts of the lungs. And you inhale for four seconds, and you exhale for six seconds. If this is too long for you, you can find your own breathing rhythm. But important is that your exhalation is always longer than your inhalation. Inhale up to the belly, into the top parts of the lungs, and exhale, letting go. Feel the breathing coming into your belly like the waves of an ocean coming and going. As you inhale, the belly expands up to the diaphragm, into the top parts of the lungs. Belly drops in slightly, and then you exhale. Be aware of the breathing, the softness of the breath. As you inhale, the breathing is a little bit cold. And as you exhale, it's a little bit more warm. Now make your breathing a little bit softer and maybe not so deep anymore. And if any thoughts are coming, just bring your attention back to the breathing. Now keep your eyes still closed and place your hands on your knees. And find your own breathing rhythm again without counting, without any breath hold. Just find your own rhythm. Now I want to show you the secret of breathing. The secret, the success of pranayama is letting go of the breath. Consciously becoming the doer and the observer. By breathing, but consciously, you just observe the breathing without only effort, without your doing. Just let the breath go, let go of the control. And for some it's, it's maybe easy, for some maybe difficult. You can't do anything wrong, you can just optimize. Consciously observe the breathing. 
letting go of the breath means letting go of the mind. I want you to take two more breaths and then slowly open your eyes again. Wow, incredible. <laughs> So can you feel already the mind comes down? Yeah, yeah, it feels as if everything is in its place and everything is like all right. <laughs> and this is not pranayama, this was just normal breathing. Okay. Because we tend to breathe 12 times in a minute if you're stressed 16 times. And with this technique, if you breathe in for four and out for six, you take six breaths in a minute. That means double the amount what you breathe usually. Okay. And this is a practice you can take away for today. Um, you can practice anywhere, anytime. You just sit down and take three to five breaths like this, or maybe even a few minutes, however, how much time you have, depends on your schedule. But whenever you feel stressed or tired or not in the right place or right mood, you just sit down, or even you can stand, you can do it in the car, and take a few conscious breaths, and exhale longer than the inhalation. And then you will immediately feel the effect of the breathing. And if you train this to yourself, then you program your mind, and you will program your body, that your body consciously breathing like this during the day. Okay. Sometimes also I forget, because stress arises, and, and people want so much for me, or have so much work to do, and then I forget to breathe and I start, start again breathing more with the mouth or breathing like 10, 12 times in a minute again. But I'm practicing every day and I'm doing this now since a couple of months regularly. And I can see the benefit that, that when I wake up in the morning that I already breathe consciously, my mind is more calm, more focused and during the day as well many times. And if I don't, if I realize that I'm out of place, out of order, then I just sit down Take a moment and take one or two deep breaths. Okay. So I, I should take link also in one of my videos, but there's other videos about real pranayama. This is just called pre-step yogic breathing. What we just did is called yogic breathing. So it's the the only the, the right way of breathing. That would be the right way to inhale and exhale. Okay, so would you suggest uh, everyone to like do this at least, you know, five minutes every day in the morning or, I mean, of course you said whenever you feel stressed, you can do, but if somebody does this regularly for five minutes, for example, in the morning, then I think they can, you know, see uh, very good changes in their life. Definitely, yes. I mean, sometimes we think we need to spend one, two hours and do so many techniques and uh, I also catch myself sometimes I do too much. But uh, the real thing is actually just consciously breathe. Or if you do another pranayama technique, if you know some other techniques, Nadi Shodana whatsoever, then you just take a few breaths. But after the breathing, again, focus the attention on the breathing. Observe the breathing, how it comes and goes without yourself um, controlling the breath. That's the key actually to calm down the mind, to get control of the mind, to get control of the nervous system. And so when you wake up, you just take a few breaths. Start the day with five conscious breaths or maybe five minutes of conscious breathing. Okay, okay. Great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been a very unique and a very different experience like in my channel since last four or five years I have interviewed so many people on astrology and sometimes on you know like different things spirituality youth 
um, and bit on Ayurveda also sometimes. But yeah, meditation, breathing and pranayam, I think uh, this is the first time we are doing it uh, on this channel and it has been a very incredible experience. And as you said, this is not even pranayam. This is what you showed us is just like simple breathing where you breathe in and you your breathe out time is more than your breathing time so thank you thank you thank you so much once again and whoever is interested to learn more from him can definitely go to his youtube channel atma flow and you can see that in the description section of this video and uh, the viewers of this video and this channel can always comment below and tell us how was your how was your experience doing this uh, breathing yourself and what other things would you like uh, advaita simha to talk in the future we we i am very sure we will have many more sessions in the upcoming future this is just the beginning but uh, of course you can also tell us uh, that yes we would like to hear this from you or that from you and accordingly, we will try our best to plan the sessions as per its availability. So thank you very much, sir. Once again, uh, it's a great pleasure. And yes, uh, I hope to meet you soon again, uh, online and offline. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. It was my pleasure also to be here today with you, all of you. And yeah, I hope in future we can do maybe a pranayama session for half an hour. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure, sure. Definitely, sure, sure. Thank you so much. Then namaste and uh, have a good day. Namaskar. Namaste.